Okay, okay, I was in the middle of editing this video and something huge just happened. So originally in this video, I was going to talk about Genshin Impact and the new testing server that was going to combat leaks and that creators could use, which I will still include in this video. But I just wanted to talk about this really quickly because this is all blowing up super fast and it has a lot to do with what I'm talking about. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, Braxphone recently released a video where he talks about Acheron and actually has early access to the game. Now, I can't play the video because there is a big reason behind it and this is why everyone's so mad. But pretty much he just shows off all of her abilities, tells you, you know, how to kind of use her and what she does. It just gives his overall feedback on the character. And honestly, I really like Braxophone and he is a great creator and there is no hate towards him. It is almost entirely Hoyaverse's fault because if you go throughout the whole of the Hoyaverse community, only a few creators have actually been selected to do this. And honestly, I think it's only like three or four other creators that actually have access to this and they're usually the top and most trusted creators. But what gets most people mad, which is something I do touch on later on in the video, is the fact that you cannot re-upload any of this video because in the actual video, it has like full game play footage of Acheron and he's trying her out fully. If you're some kind of react YouTuber or streamer or use clips from different videos to kind of, you know, make more content, you can't do that. And if you do do that, you'll end up with a strike on your channel and, you know, your video will be taken down, which obviously isn't great because you're kind of just forcing who gets to see this stuff and who doesn't just because they're one of your top creators. And this is just a screenshot from I Went to Lose this channel where he also goes through Acheron and he says any re-uploads or redistribution from the creator experience server is at risk of a copyright strike. But also what's really annoying players is the fact that they can't speak their mind about the characters because apparently in the actual contract it says you can't just blindly hate on a character at E0 and S0 meaning that creators are forced to just give a positive opinion about this even though the character may be trash I mean thank god in this case I think Acorn is actually a good character but in the future whenever we have some you know not so great characters people like Braxophone may not be able to speak their truth on you know why they're a bad character or why you probably shouldn't really pull for them and obviously after this video came out it prompted Braxophone to actually make a response about Hoyaverse and he's actually quite transparent with his whole relationship with them and and how much he's allowed to talk about. And in this video, he does go on to say that they do allow people to be negative of their characters and kind of give criticism. But honestly, I think this is only partial because there are bad things you can say about a character. I mean, whenever Dea came up, people were not happy with that. And even he said Dea wasn't a good character. But at the same time, it doesn't stop Hoyvers from making a new contract and then pretty much forcing the creators to say good things about the characters so that they don't look bad. Which obviously, if you haven't guessed by now, isn't a good thing at all. I mean, we rely on people like guide creators and stuff like that to give their honest opinion so that we can decide whether to pull for them or build them or whatever. But it seems like Hoyaverse is just trying to take this away. And I mean, this is completely not Braxophone's fault. This is completely Hoyaverse's fault. They're trying to take away this kind of transparency that the guy creator community had. And as I said, this has only gone out to a few people, so it isn't huge right now, and they're just testing it. But you could imagine how many of the other guy creators out there, I mean, there's tons. You got some other creators like Grober Certified and Mr. Pokey who do make some in-depth guide videos and help people out with the game who haven't got access to this. And this is because Hoyaverse is just kind of picking out the least controversial people out of them for some reason. And this is really bad because it means the creators are kind of forced to just be super positive about Hoyaverse just at the chance of being allowed to do something like this, which is just horrible. And of course, whenever there's drama, whether it's in the Honkai or Genshin sphere, of course, Tekton is going to make a video about it. And he talks about at length how this is really, really bad. So I definitely suggest going to watch this. But yeah, this is an extremely bad situation. And I hope the Hoyaverse don't follow through with this. And it does feel a bit weird as well because Honkai has been a really, really good space, especially for creators. I mean, they've been super positive, but this is the first L they've taken. I mean, as you know, Genshin has been in the mud at the moment, but Honkai could be soon following. I mean, Hoyaverse has already messed up one game. Could they mess up another? Probably. So they might just double down on this and it might get even worse, but we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, in the next segment of the video, I actually talk about how this testing server could affect Genshin Impact 2 whenever it does come out, if it already has came out, I don't know. But yeah, I give my thoughts and opinions and on how bad this could be, but and also maybe if Hoyaverse didn't implement these rules, that maybe it's not a bad idea at all. Okay, so recently I stumbled upon this article from Game Rant. It says Genshin Impact making changes to content creator test server. And I believe whenever I first looked at this, they actually changed the the title of what it meant maybe they got in trouble with Hoyaverse but they're pretty much saying that Genshin Impact were going to make a huge change to their stance on leaks and if you didn't see the Honkai Star Wars live stream the other day they actually talked about leaks on the actual live stream and said how much it affects them and stuff which was kind of sad because these are real people working their jobs and they really want to surprise and excite their players but it kind of gets ruined by leaks and just ruins it for a lot of players but going through this article it seems like Genshin Impact is actually making a huge change which could actually affect stuff like leaks so starting with this article it says Genshin Impact content creators will now be able to 
to post video footage of upcoming updates and characters through a new testing server. Most Genshin Impact players have relied on leaks from a wide network of reliable sources to preview unreleased content and make informed decisions on how to spend their Prima gems responsibly. However, this could change in the near future. So what they're saying here is pretty much that over time we have had a lot of leaks. I mean, you know, every single character that's come out in the past couple versions have been leaked about one or two updates before they even came out. Because Hoyverse do their own like closed beta test program where they get a ton of people to try out the game and the new character in the new update. But obviously there's a couple people mixed in with that group that will be recording and you know taking as much as they can from this version and then leaking it all online under some anonymous name so they don't get caught. But to be honest these leaks can sometimes be useful just in the case of deciding when to pull a character. I mean they said it here it can help free to play players so much because you know they got to save their Prima gems for characters they want and you can't really tell how good a character is based off of you know direct marketing and stuff so people rely on leaks to decide whether they want a character. But as I said before it also ruins stuff for some people because some people just don't want to see that but it gets plastered like all over Twitter and it's kind of hard to ignore. So it is kind of getting a bit annoying and it seems like this change could actually fix this. And they're going to say though Hoyverse has acknowledged leaks as a positive source of marketing, the vast majority of them have been subject to DMCA takedowns. Which I just want to add, even though they do take down the videos, they kind of do it a bit too late. I mean, the video will be up for like six hours, it'll go viral like amongst the Genji community, people will post it and then it's gone and then you can't really get rid of it. Most recently version 4.6 of Genshin Impact is expected to bring a plethora of additions to the game, such as Arlequino, Romuria and two new story quests. However, in order to access the footage, Genshin Impact fans have actually had to rely on unofficial channels. And Hoyverse is hoping to streamline this process for players, both from the perspective of a content creator and from the perspective of a customer. So it seems like in the future, we won't be relying on unofficial channels that have like really low quality leak footage. And instead, we'll actually have endorsed Genshin Impact content creators. I mean, this will probably be a thing for Hoyer creators. Obviously, I'm a part of that. And there's many other Genshin streamers and content creators that are part of this program. And I'm sure that they'll probably announce something very, very soon and kind of informing us about going around trying to get this content because this could be really good. And then they say while Horrorverse won't support story leaks and information obtained several patches in advance, the developers are willing to call for a stronger partnership with content creators when it comes to reporting on upcoming content. As explained by Team Mew and shared by Stain Necrolite on the Genshin Impact leak subreddit, a new content creator testing server is planned for the game. The purpose behind it will be to allow unreleased content such as Genshin Impact characters to be showcased by content creators in both visual and textual format. That being said, there is a catch to be considered. Now before we go into that catch, I just want to say this is actually huge. Having a testing server could be amazing, especially for build guide creators, because as you know, there's a ton of creators that don't get this information early. I mean, you know, there are some of the biggest content creators that either rely on leaks or actually from Genshin Impact themselves to get information for upcoming characters so they can release a build guide on the day of the release. There are many build guide creators that don't really have the opportunity. And this testing server could allow them to actually try out these characters and make their own builds before a character comes out, which is amazing. And honestly, I think a testing server will be great. And I hope I get to try this out because I've always wanted to get into more in-depth build stuff but I can never really do it because I don't really have that kind of power to you know ask Hoyaverse for information for a character but also I think it'll be really great as well because the content creators can also you know give feedback on the character that's out and say hey this isn't good enough or this is good or this is great or whatever and you know they can make a change before the character actually comes out which again is also amazing but let's just get into the catch it says before being released to the public the content would have to be reviewed and authorized by Hoyaverse failure to do so would be seen as a violation of conduct and would likely result in a termination of the content creator partnership in particular it is not advisable to bluntly claim that certain Genshin Impact characters such as Dare have an awful kit instead content creators are encouraged to list the pros and cons of each character or weapon when using footage and information from the testing server so what it seems here is that Genshin are kind of you know forcing them to say good things about the characters which is not great at all I mean, the idea of a testing server itself is great, and I really support that, but but not being able to hate on a character is kind of, you know, manipulative, and yeah, I don't really get that. I mean, if a character's got an awful kit, they've got an awful kit. You can't just, like, force someone to say it's really, really good. But I do like that you can still list pros and cons, like, you can actually have a con. But, you know, a character that just has an awful kit overall, and you can't say anything about it, is kind of scummy. I mean, you want to let your fan base know what you think of a character, like, honestly. You can't just lie and say, yeah, yeah, this is a great character, go build it, because the content creator is the only one with this server and they're trusting you to you know give them information and give them honest information but it seems like Genshin Impact isn't really allowing them to do that here and honestly with the release of leaks and stuff it just allows creators to be more free and say what they think about a character rather than being forced by Genshin but having access to a testing server. Those really positives and negatives to this new kind of testing server and I mean hey it is great that we've got a testing server don't get me wrong or that we're gonna get a testing server but not being able to speak your mind whenever it comes to a new character is a little bit weird and I kind of get why Genshin do it because, you know, it's bad advertising. But at the same time, it's the only way that the characters are going to get fixed. I mean, as I said before, they've got plenty of time to actually change this character. And if they are negative about it, then, you know, 
just change it. It's easy as that. And then finally on this last paragraph, they say Alakido and Genshin Impact is currently being compared to Hu Tao, another Pyro Polarm character. And players have been critical of our lack of interruption resistance over reliance on Bennett. While Ho versus support of content creators reporting on beta footage is seen as a good decision by the community, fans are still hoping it won't stifle criticism and feedback for future Genshin Impact characters, especially once Natlan launches in late summer 2024. Which again, I don't think the community don't want any criticism for the characters. I think they do want more. I mean, criticism will bring change to these characters. And I hope it turns out that Hoyaverse are a little bit more lenient about what the cons can be and what you can talk about as the cons, because it's really bad not to be able to talk about characters honestly. And I think that many Genshin Impact creators may not even take up this offer and just, you know, keep using leaks or whatever sources they've got, because it allows them to speak freely without getting in some kind of contract or something where they're locked in and can't really say what they actually think. They're more of just a puppet for Genshin. And especially knowing some of the bigger build guide creators, I'm sure they won't really stand for this and they will try to speak as much of that honest truth as they can. But overall, I think this is pretty good. I mean, it, it does allow us creators to actually try out these characters before they come out and make up our own opinion of the characters, which is really, really great. And although you may not be able to talk about it until the actual character comes out, I think it's still great that we, you know, have a chance to use them. And a lot of build guide creators will be eating good because they have a ton of information to work with now and they pretty much have everything they need. Rather than some like full ATP video where they kind of know what their abilities are, but they're not sure. And instead they just get the whole game, get to try them out, get to try them out with different teams, get to try them with different weapons and artifacts. And you know, it's just great overall. And obviously with all the talk of leaks and stuff going on, I really hope this does bring an end to it too. Because a lot of the leaks recently, especially with Arlequino and also in Honkai Star of Acheron, there's been a lot of players voicing their concerns about this. It's getting a little bit annoying seeing all of these updates and, and all of these story spoilers being released on everything like Twitter and stuff and you know, spoiling the entire game, which just makes it less fun. Like yes, it may be a good update and it may be worth talking about it, you know, before the game comes out, but is it really that worth it? Because there's a lot of people that just want to enjoy the game and the story as it comes out for themselves rather than getting spoiled on some, you know, post from some random guy that just wants some clicks. So yeah, this is super interesting coming from Genshin Impact. I never really thought we'd get something like this, but it seems like we're getting it very, very soon. And let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do you think a content creator test server will be good and, you know, good for creators? Or do you think, you know, leaks are just good enough and we should just live with them? Because I haven't really seen anyone talk about this, so I don't really know what the general consensus of this is. And I think it's also a bad thing at the same time that creators aren't allowed to speak about what they want. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And also follow me on Twitch because I've been streaming there a ton. And, you know, we're going to be streaming stuff like Genshin, Honkai, and even more. And just talking about stuff like this. And yeah, that's all I got. That's all. See ya.